Like I said, it's effective use of coaching tools for training uh, with myself and Alex Gurkoff. Uh, Alex has been with us for three years now. Yeah. yeah he's been with us for three years now. Uh, he was the inventor of the torch. He's been coaching as long as I've been living, probably. Uh, he's <laughs> coached several sports. Uh, in Russia, you coached uh, stuff besides just bowling, too, didn't you? Swimming or something? Swimming. Yeah, you coached swimming, swimming and yeah. bowling. Um, you got your degree, and I'll get this wrong, in optical engineering or something yeah. like that? Optical first, first optical engineer and the second one uh, sport uh, university. Sport university. Yeah. So he has a very detailed uh, background in sport um, outside of just bowling. Um, he's brought a very unique uh, look to the sport and actually changed quite a bit of the way that we look at the way we do things here in the training center. So, um, uh, And then you've got myself. I've been at the training center for 22 years now. Um, originally, I was the training center coordinator. Now I am technically the director of coaching technology, but I still, uh, I'm not sure they're happy, but I still dabble in the training center and kind of nudge them along when they need help down there too. So I do a little bit of everything. So right now I also am traveling a lot. I'm also, I, I do all the Specto. We set up the Specto Go at all the PBA shows. So um, we're there quite a bit too. Um, so the outline of what we're going to cover today is um, what are the three types of feedback? Uh, how do we use these different types of feedback for faster learning? And then how to break bad habits and muscle memory. So as we go through, like I said, any questions you have, feel free to type them in the chat and we'll be happy to go back and answer them later on. So we'll start with the feedback types. So um, I'll let him kind of detail each of them a little bit more detailed, but there's audio, visual, kinesthetic, and then you've got multi-channel. So why don't you just start by kind of giving us a uh, um, what the uh, differences are between them. Actually, I think the... No, no, this next one, next one, yeah. So you first, want to start with the bad? Uh, go back. Go back. back. Okay, go back. Okay, first, I think it's necessary to talk a little bit about uh, what feedback is. Yeah. So uh, we have eyes, have hair, have muscles, body. And uh, at the moment when we do something, at the moment when we're trying to create maybe a new movement, when we're practicing this new movement, uh, we can see what happens. We can sometimes hear what happens. And of course, we can feel what happens, what kind of movement. And in general, this is three types of feedback. So, and uh, in general, in general, why we start talking about feedback? Because coaching tools, coaching tool. This is perfect uh, for creating correct feedback, for creating correct feedback. Why? Because for my opinion, human body, it's a big liar. <laughs> so, what you heard we, from Alex, our yes. body is a big liar. Yes. If we, uh, at the moment when we do something, when we do something, yes, I must be sure I do it correct. So, <laughs> it's a lot of time. At the moment when I ask my students, can you move your hand? Exactly straight back every time I saw one picture. They move uh, their hand behind the back, yes? Mm -hmm. So they feel they can be like, they absolutely told me, I'm absolutely sure. Now this is perfect hand position. This is perfect arm position. But uh, this is happens only because uh, in this case, his kinesthetic feedback. Because, because he used kinesthetic on base with it, it's wrong. Because human body is a, long, uh, is a liar, yes. And that's why, that's why uh, coaching tools help us to create correct feedback. And that's why it's very important to understand what means good feedback, what means bad feedback, and how we can create it. Okay, so. So the difference between good and feedback. So feedback basically is just any message that uh, is being given to uh, connecting our brain and our body. Yeah. Is that Correct. So uh, body, uh, body or eyes or hair. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know. I don't know how to use. No. Yes. This one. This one. <laughs> well, more, technically, this, yeah, this one. Feel like yes. I think. I think maybe you know storm bowling balls. Yes. Yeah. They have smells. Yes. Sometimes maybe. Oh look, vanilla skip too much. Yes. Maybe I must use chair. Yes. Maybe this is one more way. Yes. So, but so you're still working on ways to yes, use uh, to smell. Use smell so yeah. technically, that's another feedback channel. But okay. Yeah. It's not one we're using actively yeah. during coaching as of yet. So, um, so why don't you kind of give us some? Um, you've got some points here that what makes feedback good versus bad. So why don't you go over those a little bit? 
So first, uh, feedback, good feedback, must be informative. What means informative? When I doing something, when I doing something, on this moment, I must to see, I must to understand, I must to feel what happens on the real, not in my feeling, not my in my brain, not my, in my imagination. And uh, one more thing, uh, uh, we have uh, this informative must help me if it's necessary do something uh, like create some adjustment on this moment some adjustments yes so uh this is uh, that's why that's why feedback must be informative so we have a lot of type of feedback so they they just uh told to us though this is good or this is bad mm -hmm. if i have only good or bad this is means nothing for me if i can feel okay a little bit more to the right or a little bit more to the left a little bit faster a little bit slow this feedback now give me information so and because more specific, of more specific information and because uh, feedback give me this specific information I can create adjustment in my movement yes not only yes or no specific information so feedback good feedback is informative feedback next one it's immediate immediate how to pronounce this word immediate right? immediate immediate uh, why it's important why it's important uh, in uh, our body, our brain, our mind can create correction in the moment, exactly at the moment when we're doing this moment. And this is one of the best type of correction. So if I have feedback after I did something, after I, I, I finished my moment, yes? So it's look like I need to to use some time for figure out what I do wrong, then create a new program and then doing this moment one more time and trying to fix this problem, yes? Mm -hmm. So if, in, if if I have immediate feedback, I can fix this problem exactly at the moment when I'm doing this moment. And because of this, and because of this, I finally create my new moment much faster. Okay. So immediately feedback. And then simple. Uh, what means simple? We're talking about informative and feedback must be informative, yes? But if feedback sound for me like Okay, you must turn your wrist on three degrees to the right. So, I don't know what to do, yes? You don't know what I don't, three degrees is? No, no I, I know, I know. <laughs> but I must spend a lot of time to figure out for myself in my brain, what's mean right, what's mean three degrees, mm -hmm. how it's, yeah, how to do this coloration. Or, for example, uh, if uh, I, I have feedback like words or numbers or something like this, so I'd like to see simple feedback, like I have image and I just trying to repeat this image. I have a uh, feeling and I just trying to repeat this feeling. Yes. So it's much more simple. So I think, I think uh, if we have too much information, if feedback too informative, have numbers, words, so many things. Yes. It's very difficult uh, to create correct adjustment because I need to spend. Yeah. I think a common example of this in coaching too would be we get a lot of people that come here. Well, my coach has me working on these four things. Well, I can tell you now, you are not going to work on four things and get them done right. You've got to knock them off one at a time. So I think a good example of not being simple enough is when people try to go, okay, I'm going to change all of these things at the same time and just make it perfect because it's not really a practical approach to doing it. Yeah. So it's a yeah. good example. Yes, of good example. And not being simple. Enough. One more example. For example, we're we working with tilt forward. Mm -hmm. Yes. How big? So, and uh, I can tell my students, you must have tilt forward a little bit more, or I can tell him, okay, six degrees more. So, what, what is more simple? So, <laughs> more, a little bit more. Right. It's much more easier for doing this, yeah, than six degrees, yes? Much more. It's maybe close to 15 degrees, yes? Right. So, it looks like we must use some simple images and simple words and simple feeling for create this type of feedback, not something like that. Yeah, and yes. for another person, for some people, somebody that's very technical, that six degrees might be the better way to say it, and somebody that's a little bit uh, less technical, that six degrees uh, might scare a little bit, A little bit later we will talk about the right side and the left side of the brain, yes, oh, about boy, languages of the brain. right side, yes. So I agree, for these people, numbers is good, but finally, finally, image that we have, feel like a little bit more <laughs> that's it <laughs> so those were some 
keys to what makes feedback good. Now you've got a couple of things mentioned here of what makes key, uh, feedback bad. So the same uh, because we talked a little bit about this. Yes, now we know time. If we have delayed, if feedback delayed, so it's look like I must use my brain. I use must my, my mind for figure out what happens wrong, and then only after this, I, when I repeat this moment next time. I try to create and change. Yes, I like immediately feedback. So it's much more productive. It's much more faster. And next one, no, oh, we just talked about this communication style. Yeah, communications. So this is interesting, uh, but uh, I think all bowlers and a lot of other sportsmen uh, have eighty percent communication style of feedback. Yes. So it's it's very popular. It's most most popular. So before we can ability to make a video or do other stuff, yes. How looks like feedback? Okay, player do something, then come mm -hmm. to coaches and they, they start communicate. So it's work. It's work. It's work. So we can have a lot of example, but this is the longest way. This is the longest way for create adjustment. This is longer way for create new movement. So uh, communication style, communication style. This style of feedback is pretty good if, as a player, you finally going to be coach. So because this style of feedback, this communication style of feedback, help you to uh, create like knowledge about all the stuff. Yes, but if you just want to bow, so forget about this. All right. Well, I think one of the other keys that you kind of were pointing out with this one too is how the message is delivered can make it good versus bad. Because me and you could both tell somebody the same thing. I tell it to him like a drill sergeant because that's my personality. Okay. And you tell it to him like a very nice Russian man. And okay. which one are they likely going to respond to better? Okay. Depending on the person, it probably yes, could differ yes, a yes. Bit. But it's more, it's more like an emo emotion like yeah. uh, level of this. Yeah. Yeah. So even just sometimes it's not always that the message is good or the feedback is good versus bad, but it's how that feedback is delivered could make it just as uh, bad as well. So now we're going to go into kind of some examples, and some of these will be good, some of these will be bad. <laughs> yeah. So the first one here, I think we could all guess, although based on the results that some coaches get with this method, have you done? Have you coached bowlers like this much? <laughs> no. You don't yell at your coaches no, if you're I, no, I'm, like I'm not, I'm not. I know, I know this is uh first this is absolutely not informative. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think it's so, informative? Yes. It's this feedback has delay, yes. <laughs> has delay. So <laughs> Yeah, because he's probably not on the field right now doing the problem. So he's probably not getting immediate feedback. This is probably like a play later and he just went to the sidelines. Yeah. So it's not very immediate, you're right. Is it simple? You probably only use yes, a few words. Yes, I think I think this is good. Yes, this is simple. Yeah, uh, it's look like we have one good thing. Yes, okay. it's very simple feedback. Yeah, so player player absolutely understand he did something wrong. <laughs> Some other examples here is of audio feedback. Is obviously the coach yelling is a very negative one. Yes, and it's easy to know that that's probably not the best way. Although in some sports, I think that is the communication style that they choose. I'm not sure that that's the most effective because I think you can look at any any of the great coaches of all time and you've got examples of people that don't ever really need to get that aggressive and some that are only aggressive and they both found results their way so yeah. I don't think you can say that you can't do it that way but it certainly isn't the way that we would do it here so I've got a couple of videos here um, which is the first one we want to do the sound of the music the sound of the swing yes Audio is probably very loud, but uh, your biggest key in that, though, was um, tying the sound, creating, a, finding a so, sound that linked to the movement the player was trying to do so they could feel it in a different way that they normally did, right? So let's start with this. My wife, my wife, she she's a professional dancer. <laughs> that's why, that's why uh, in my practice as a coach, I find a lot of uh, good things from dancers practice, yes. So, and for me, for me, this is, uh, if you're talking about in general, this is not kind of feedback. This video can illustrate to us how we can create image of the moment. And in this case, this audio, 
image of the mm -hmm. movement yes so and uh i use this video like this uh my player my player watch this video a lot of time in a row they're trying to remember uh movement and on the same time audio sounds yes and then during the approach if we move uh, so of course they are working with timing yes of course we're working with smooth predictable movement yes so at this moment in this moment so we can turn this music on and then player like dancing mm -hmm. like dancing and if he feel the difference between his movement and music he hear it yes mm -hmm. he feel it right and now this is audio feedback he use this audio like oh he used this audio, audio sound, like feedback, and if you do something wrong timing, he can hear it. So, so we use this uh, music like when we're working with timing. Yeah, I know I actually do something similar to this when I'm bowling, is when I want to throw it harder, I think of like a faster song, and then when yeah. I want to throw it slower, I think of like a song like the Titanic thing, Not more the super slow, and it look, kind of helps my look, internal rhythms change. In general, in general, this is not original music. A little bit change. Uh, right. You don't, you don't uh, can hear it, but I change a little bit some timing of this music, and finally, I to get the match to up get, the right yes, thing. yes, yes, yes. And of course, modern technology help us. Of course, different players have different timing. We can make it slowly. We cannot make it slow, uh, faster, and finally find the correct rhythm for any players. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have another video here. We're going to play, which you guys have probably all seen this video before. Of course, <laughs> this is more like fun, this is more like joke, yeah? but, so. You don't uh, practice like that? That's how I practice, maybe that's what my problem so is. So this is, <laughs> <laughs> I think this is good, uh, a little good mental preparation for competition, yes? But on the same time, on the same time, I think you, uh, you have a lot of time, yes? Good strike has really good sound, yes? Yeah. So, and, uh, for me, for me, uh, you can create feedback of sound of the pins on the same time. Of course, this is like more, more like job. Yeah, we, we're trying, we're trying to make this presentation like more funny. So, but why not? And on the same time, on the same time, this is good mental preparation for competition, for my opinion. And uh, but this guy have have some bad thing after this, <laughs> after this preparation. I remember, yeah, something like this moment. Yeah, but uh, so. This is an uh, example of audio feedback, how we heard the, the pins moment, yes? Do I have good carry or not? After I learned, after I heard this a lot, yes, I can... You know what hear. it's supposed yes, to sound Yes, I know how it's supposed to be. Another one that I threw on here was just the sound of video games. Because a lot of times, if you do something good in a video game, you hear a nice happy sound. And if you die, you hear a much different type of sound. So even those types of things give you feedback of whether what just happened was good or bad. So now okay. visual feedback. Let's Back to start. your wife in the dance studio. Yeah, because my wife is a professional dancer. So in 19th century, when uh, the mirror finally, the mirror is going to be cheap. Mirror class, if you're talking about dancer studio, now it's a standard. Why? Because reflection of the mirror, so I think this is one of the best type of feedback. It's simple, it's immediate, and it's affirmative because I can see exactly mm -hmm. what's happened with my body. I can see all the six degrees or five degrees. Yeah. Yes, I can see. So that's why that's why now it's standard. Now it's standard. So and for my opinion, this is one of the best, one of the best type of feedback at the moment when we're trying to learn new movement. So we can see posture. We can we can see how fast I do this movement. We can see rhythm of this movement. We can see body position, all this stuff. Yeah, in my opinion, this is one of the best. So, this is... I talk. heard the guy that made this thing was amazing. Yeah, 
I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so you, you know, I can you I can you can tell your story how I invented this stuff. Sure. Yeah. So um, you know, in Russia, I work as a coach with national team, but with deaf national team mm -hmm. too. Yes. So we spent one and a half hour in the classroom. So and I. I have a board and I draw it a lot and I'm trying to explain to these people what mean break point, exit point, what kind of correct adjustment we must to do, how to use all this stuff. Yeah. And then we start practice and they can see. They understand practice. Yes. <laughs> yes. But not, 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 not exactly nothing, but not not like I'd like to. So and I start thinking uh, how I can show these guys what mean exit point, how target incline movement, all this stuff. And on the back of this bowling center, you know, we have different picture, yes? So I saw a few lines, like few absolutely vertical lines. So because my first degree is optical and electronics, I start move left, right, I know the, the law, right. I know the law. And I see these lines follow me. And then I think just make this more visible and that's it. So my first visit, I uh, bought in in the uh, road uh, stick. How to call this fish uh, fishing rod? Oh yeah, fishing fish, rod. Fishing rod. I bought fishing rod. Yes. Then next, I bought LED tape. I had oh, I had frame. Yeah. Yes, I put LED tape on the fish rod. Yes, set up it, and that's it. So a little fancier now. Than yes, that. We, no. we don't use a fishing rod. Does yes. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we will the next generation of the torch. Yes, fishing rod. We're so, but anyway, if you find the fishing rod version out there, you'll yes. probably buy it back. Uh, feedback from torch, it's simple, because you can see the movement. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not necessary to talk about uh, degrees or other stuff. It's immediately, mm -hmm. and on the same time, on the same time, simple, immediately, and in the form, in the formative, yes, mm -hmm. because if you change your stat position, right. you torch help those. you. Yes, you can change. Frame position because mm -hmm. of this you can set up touch on different break point or exit point position. So it's very simple. And on the same time, because it's uh, because it's simple, because it's simple, uh, it's very easy. It's very easy uh, to work with this. Look, uh, touch. If you're talking about movement, of course, torch is a be uh, very good tool for working with direction of approach. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to see your direction of approach pretty straight, you must try to keep torch on the same zone, same line, right? the, on the same line. But if you drift, the torch drift with you. But finally, finally, when you find your perfect amount of the drift, you know, every time I drift left for bots, every time I drift left for bots, that means every time. Reflection drift to the left, pretty close to two bots. Mm -hmm. That means if you can uh, you can control this, and you can repeat it every time, mm -hmm. just using a uh, moment of reflection. So for me, it's very simple, very informative, and uh, on the same time, of course, uh, biggest things of torch. This is they create image of the uh, target client in our mm -hmm. mind. Yes. Yeah, I know the first couple times I practiced with it, the biggest thing I noticed was how much my head was just flopping all over the place because <laughs> I can see that light just like shaking all over the place. And even after a couple of shots without even get, being given any feedback from other people, my brain just didn't like to see that. So my body started to solidify itself more just because of that. Okay, next one. Okay, mirror, another thing that we use here a lot in the training center. So uh, that's interesting, but now on this device we have uh, every day we have line. Oh yeah, line. Is, uh, it's very, line it's very, it's very popular. No, I mean a uh, line of people. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, line of people. They so and we have. If I remember correctly, we have video how yep. to use this. Go ahead and turn the sound off, but so you can kind of talk over the top of it. Uh, they can see it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah, they're seeing the video right now. Okay, can Play that one more time. One more time. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't think I played it the first time. Yep. So uh, this this device we call this device video mirror. So, and this is uh, pretty close 
This is pretty close to dancer class, yes, for mirror in dancing mm -hmm. class. So the bowling version? Yes, but bowling version. So, uh, because in bowling it's too many think, uh, things happens behind you, it's very important to see what happens this way. So, uh, that's why, that's why it's very simple design. We just use projector, special wireless connection and camera. And finally, finally, bowler can see uh, himself at the moment when he's doing movement, but he can see himself on different view. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this camera is portable and we can create back view, side view and front view. Mm -hmm. So, and because of this, because of this, this is like a modern technology version of version of the mirror of the normal video. Right. Because on mirror, you can see it on the front view. Now, back view, side view, front view, and uh, because of this, this feedback informative, this feedback immediately, this feedback simple, mm -hmm. and we can uh, we can make a lot of uh, different uh, ways how to use it. We're working with swing direction, we're working with posture, mm -hmm. we're working with finish position, we're working with wrist position on the ball, we're working with tails, we're working with timing. It's like it's very unique and very, uh, uh, we, can, we have, we have a, a lot of variation how to use this device. Mm -hmm. So now we got so Okay, this, next one, yeah. Next one is kinesthetic. I think this first one everybody will appreciate is definitely Kinesthetic feedback. Yeah, this is kinesthetic feedback. So, so if I step so up, so right, I use, I, I use, I use, I use, I use uh, this feedback a lot of time in my you life. Hit your, you hit your coaches with, or your no, 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 break? no, no. I did it by myself. Oh, you learned, you learned. Yes, a lot I, I learned, I learned this way. I learned this way. Yes. So in Russia, we said, if you step on the rack, that means you do something wrong. You do something wrong. So when I start ball, when I start ball in Russia, uh, so we have no coaches. Mm -hmm. You know, first bowling center in Russia was built in 1989. Wow. We have we, we had no bowling it's center before. Young. Yes. So I start practice, and of course, at this moment we have no bowlers, no coaches, no information, nothing. Yes. But I'm I'm going to be professional player. Yes. And it's like because of this, because I trying to figure out how to do all this stuff by myself, have no information. Yes. I step on the rack a lot, a lot, a lot <laughs> of time, a lot of time. But uh, finally, I think this is good for coaches because I know what feel your student exactly yeah. on this moment because you did it before. Right. You did it before. So this is uh, uh, this feedback. This feedback is immediately. Yes, that's good. Definitely. This feedback is uh, simple. Simple. Just one little knot on your end. Yes. But if you're talking about, it's not uh, informative, yes? I don't think it's informative. No, <laughs> this is just tell you, okay, this is wrong. That's it. I cannot, I don't know why it's wrong. I don't know how to create adjustment. I don't know what to do. So this is just, <laughs> this is just for fun. Okay, so the real one would be, we've got two here. One is the swinging someone's arm. I've got a video here that we will play. You can see this is you here with your lesson the other day. Actually, it's lagging a little bit. Let's play that one more time in case it didn't play through. Okay. So maybe one more time. Oh, you want to see it one more time? Yes, one more time, please. I think it's lagging a little bit when it plays. Oh my. Either way, they got the point of what it was. So I feel like it's so much more to play it one more time. Okay, good. So, uh, Kinesthetic feedback, kinesthetic feedback, uh, for my opinion, for my opinion, this is one of the most important feedback. Why? Uh, because on our practice, when we're working with new moment, finally, finally, we're creating new program of the moment. We create new image of the moment. So, and this new image of moment in general, 
This is kinesthetic movement. This is kinesthetic image. So it's look like kinesthetic feedback much more closer to final product of our practice than other. Than other. That's why I think this is very important. But it's very difficult for realize. It's very difficult for doing, for doing this, yes? So, on this example, on this example, uh, I do it, uh, I do it every time. If I have student with, uh, and I, I can, I can see, uh, I can see this student stopping this wheel. This student uh, use the muscles when he swing the ball, yes? Mm -hmm. This uses, this student trying to control what happens. And uh, usually, uh, the students never feel something different before. They don't, they just don't know how how what yes. mean, how it's feel re feel relaxing swing how it's feel like yes on this case i ask uh, him to do this i just set up this uh, his uh, this students on finished position and then i ask him to do this okay now please just relax your arm and now i swing your arm mm -hmm. this is my job it's not because i practice this a lot I, uh, so I think my rhythm of the swing is pretty close to natural. I use a lot of different devices for finally got it. So, and on the same time, on the same time, I start swing his arm and I trying to give him the feeling what means relaxing swing, what mean acceleration in correct moment. On the same time, on the same time, when we're talking about exactly this video, I trying to show to this uh, student on the same time timing of release. I swing his arm by myself, I create normal relaxing swing, and then on the same moment, I just a little bit uh, pull his arm down, yes? This is, uh, I show him using this tactile feeling, timing of release on the same time, it, at what moment we must start uh, release. So, and it's interesting, and this is usually, usually when I start doing this, first feedback from the students, I never feel something like this before mm -hmm. because before they they always trying oh, to control they always trying pulling or pushing use the muscles yes when I start with the arm this is first time when these guys start feel what mean relaxing swing how it's look like and it's very effective if we're talking about correct timing of, mm -hmm. of, of release on the same time so of course it's uh, for coaches if coaches want to use the style, it's necessary to spend some time for practice this. But this is a good example how to create correct kinesthetic feedback. Okay. Uh, whoops. The last one we had there was an arrow, which we've got some pictures of that um, we have coming some up. Picture, yeah, they're yes. further uh, down. Yes. the next slide, but they're not. Yeah, it's, it's will be on the next slide. Arrow. So, you know, I think, I hope you, you know what's an arrow. This is our one more new coaching tools. Mm -hmm. And, uh, for example, when we're working with poster, on the finished position, yes, we use part of the arrow and only at the moment when player feel he's touching the arrow on his shoulder, that's mean now his tilt to the right is good and his shoulder position is good. Right. So, uh, coach just sit up arrow in correct position and then player must touch him the arrow with his shoulder, yes. And then because we create this vertical stick, player starts swing the ball and if at the moment when he moves his elbow to the right, he just touching the arrow. It's right. like arrow at the same time. It's not only visual feedback. Arrow can create uh, kinesthetic yeah. feedback on the same time. Which that's where we actually talked about it was here. So some other examples of multi-channel feedback is um, oh, wow. they've become, uh oh, did your computer die? Is uh, the back posture trainer. They've got those devices now that you can like put on your back here and they'll give you both a sound and a vibration uh, when you're up, not upright enough. So it kind of helps give you feedback that's immediate because anytime that you fall outside of that, um, Oops. then it will give you that feedback. Um, One moment. He's going to log into his computer because he's got a couple of examples here he wanted to show us too. Okay. Alright, start. Because start. We have the app on your phone. You can show yes. us that one. Yes, yes, I know, I know, I know. Oh, I like this example. Let's connect. Sorry about this, guys. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to connect. Oh, it's disconnect now. 
I drank to it. What was worst? Come on. Nope. Come on. Okay, so I have uh, one more example of uh, this is uh, on the same time audio and kinesthetic feedback. I use special application on my phone. And yeah, at the moment when uh, my students and I are working with uh, correct moment on this, look what happens. You see it, yeah? And uh, if I do correct moment, if I do correct moment with my wrist, mm -hmm. as a result, I can hear correct sound. So, for my opinion, so versus the uh, uh, most uh, common type of audio feedback, most common type of audio feedback, coach told you, yes, coach told you after, yes, after you do something, you have this conversation. This type of feedback, this type of feedback, exactly at the moment when you're doing something, you can hear the sound. Right. And finally, finally, one more thing, this sound, this sound, uh, create image of the movement. And this is help to to player understand much more natural how to do this. Okay, it's look like it's died. I'm sorry about this. No. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, it's look like we cannot use it. Okay, let's see then. So then your arrow with the swing, which I think this is where you've got some of those different examples. Yes, uh, it's a lot of now. Now we can see arrow. I think this is the one you were describing earlier here. Where you've got uh, Evan with a shoulder touching the bar. Yeah, so you this can one, see... this screen. Oh, this one. You see, okay. you see yes. Uh, yeah, we sit up arrow, we sit up it's in vertical position. Mm -hmm. And then the player trying to touch the arrow. And if you do this, that means tilt to the right is correct, mm -hmm. uh, posture is correct, everything is correct, yes. So, uh, in uh, one, more, one more thing how to create kinesthetic feedback using uh, arrow. At the moment when we're working with timing, of course, we set up the stick uh, mm -hmm. on the direction of push away and on the correct position for uh, timing of push away. But first time, first time before we start to use error with real bowling ball, you can just without the bowling ball and ask the students touching the stick. Mm -hmm. And at the moment when students touching the stick and like slide along the stick, mm -hmm. they can feel this direction. They so like in this example here, like we're yeah, pushing but it straight yes, down that yes, bar. But I think this the, is the same but, one uh, Absolutely the same, look, but without bowling ball. But without bowling ball, and just, bowling ball. just follow the wrist mm -hmm. to the stick. Yes, and on the scene, it's now, if you follow, you can feel this direction of this moment, and you can see direction of the moment. This is uh, on the same time, uh, kinesthetic and visual feedback. And for those of you that don't know, this is his wonderful wife right here, the dancer. She looks like a bowler here to me, so I guess you've trained her a little bit along the way. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes of course. Yeah. So now we're going to talk about the learning cycle a little bit. So I think you've got it broken down into a couple of different stages. Um, and so I'll let you kind of go through and talk about this. So now we've got, talked about feedback, uh, how to use different ways to give feedback. Um, so now we're going to talk about, okay, now that I know these feedback, what do I use them for? What do I do with them? Because feedback by itself doesn't do too much. So. Yes. So uh, if we talk about learning cycle uh, on the first stage of the first stage, uh, we don't use feedback a lot. Yes. Uh, why? Because on the first stage, we are just trying to create image of the movement and the mind of the students. Yes. So uh, and for doing this, for doing this, of course, for different people, for different people, uh, we use different amount of information, yes? But in general, if you're talking about all information, we'll, we, we, uh, we can use this. So we can, uh, we can use this. We can uh, use logic and objective. We can uh, give to the students some information, including logic and objectives of this moment, biomechanics of this moment, visual examples of this moment, kinesthetic image of this moment, sound or rhythmic image of this moment. Yeah, and just to so be clear, sorry to interrupt you real quick, but just to be clear, image isn't necessarily a picture. Image is like a program. Yes. Image is to yes. your brain what this needs to look like, slash feel like, slash whatever sound like. It's what the outcome needs to be. So like, and we'll talk about the left brain, right brain, we get this a little yeah. bit more, but image isn't a picture of what this is. 
image is like the program or this is the how to guide. It's yeah. like, uh, like Ikea, you were just talking about, <laughs> that's what you had for lunch was Ikea meatballs. Yeah. But it's like their uh, instructions of how to put it together. That would be the image. Yes. And in that instance, it is a picture, but it's not always a picture. Yeah. So, and of course, uh, as a coach on this moment, I can use uh, uh, coaching tools too. I can use Torch, Aero, or uh, uh, Video Mirror. But uh, on this moment, I show to the player how to do this. Yes, he he just uh, still not start to perform it. Okay, on the next stage, on the next stage, now now uh, player start to perform this moment, and this is very important. To me. And on this moment, feedback one of the most important things. So uh, during the moment performance, sorry, now I have time notice. Yes, I like mm -hmm. it's it's like science part for me <laughs> during the movement performance process, all sensory system of our body start producing feedback. Visual, kinesthetic and sound signals are being received and uh, processed in our mind. Our mind compares this information with the created image of movement and if it's necessary, it improves movement program. Look, uh, this is one of the best thing in our mind. Our mind can create, can create correction exactly at the moment when we're doing something. And if we have immediately feedback, mind create movement and create correction on the same time. And uh, final product, this is like a uh, pattern of movement. This is program of movement, yes? But a uh, program if, of movement, this is not like, so I must do this, 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 and this. Program of moment, the biggest part of program of moment, this is what should I do if something happens wrong? It's like a lot of program of corrections around this, yes? And that's why, that's why when we use coaching tools and when we use uh, correct feedback, our mind creates a lot of program of correction. This is normal for human body. I always trying to do something wrong, mm -hmm. yes? But if I have feedback, I know oh, I do it wrong, I change it. I do it wrong, I change it. And as a result, we create program of moment and a lot of program of correction of this moment much faster than if I just do, do it wrong. So. Okay. And then the last stage. And last stage. Okay. Now, uh, after the second stage, we create a perfect moment. Coach uh, happy about this, player happy about this. But unfortunately, we have no, no, no button safe in our mind. <laughs> so on computer, I create a new program, save, it starts repeating, yes. If I one time do this moment correct, it doesn't mean I can repeat it a lot of right. time in a row. That's why uh, button safe in our mind looks like a lot of repetition. Uh, so practice. yes, rule of 10,000 repetition. Of course, this number is scary, yes, but for if I have correct feedback, this number is small, yes, it's not so. It's not 10,000, it's less. If, it, if I have no correct feedback, it's maybe bigger. So, and because I'd like to repeat this moment uh, a lot of time in a row, why it's important a lot of time in a row correct? Because if, for example, I do this moment one time correct, one time wrong, one time correct, one time wrong, my subconscious, my mind just don't know what to remember. I have it. Now, which one's right? Yes, they don't know what moment is right. Maybe I didn't to remember so this. Randomly maybe. choose one when it's yes, time to do yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. But if I always repeat this moment all the same, maybe 10 times correct, one time wrong, now my mind, my subconscious, no, okay, this guy repeat this moment a lot of time in a row. That means I must remember this moment. It's something important. And correct feedback, help me. Coaching tools, help me to do it correct. And as a result, it's not now 10,000 times, it's maybe smaller. Okay. So, and optimal feedback, optimal feedback, and uh, optimal feedback because of coaching tools help me to do it correct. Yeah. Okay, and the last part of this is how do we break bad habits? Okay. So we this is learn how to uh, give feedback, we've learned how to help them understand the learning process to where they can get better, but then I still, coach, players will still say, well coach, I still just, I have this one bad habit. How do I break that one bad habit? How we can break this one uh, bad this habit? This is now we get to talk about the brain. Yes, now we're talking about brain. And uh, 
You see, all this, uh, all this webinar, we're talking about images, yes? Mm -hmm. And uh, I know, in English, images, this only picture, yes? In Russian, the same word, images, means images, kinesthetic images, audio images, this is still uh, all images. And we, all the time, we're talking about images. And uh, at the moment when we practice, uh, we use our brain. But we have left and right side. Left side of the brain, this is logic part. And language of this part, language of left side of the brain, this is what? This communication, numbers, all these things, this is left. Of course, we use left part because it's logic. But if we're talking about movement, right side of the brain produces the movement. And right side of the brain, uh, on some, some psychologists call uh, right side of the brain artistic part. Like good artists, mm -hmm. their right side of the brain is dominate. So, uh, and language of the right side of the brain is images. Doesn't matter what, audio, kinesthetic, mm, sound, this is language of the right side of the brain. And because right side of the brain finally perform the program of the moment, if we use language of images, we can perform movement much faster. And if we find correct image, correct image, this correct image help us broke the bad habit much faster. So, you know, you know, sometimes, sometimes, uh, on my practice with students, I spend a lot of time for trying to find this only one image which helped my student the fix the, the, the problem the most, yes? One must help him. So, one secret for break, uh, for fast break, uh, uh, like mistakes, yes, or bad habits. This is use right side using images language. And next one, one more. It's very important too. Uh, look, uh, just for example, uh, I have a bad habit. I don't know, some bad habit. And every time, uh, so, uh, I don't know, I don't know uh, how to explain this. Okay, uh, let me, uh, give me a second, give me a second. So, look, okay, uh, my timing is bad, mm -hmm. yes? And at the moment, I'm on the lane. I'm in my start position. I have ball in my hand, yes? So, in this moment, my subconscious, my old muscle memory, absolutely know what to do. Mm -hmm. If I try, this is comfortable situation for me, yes? And this is not only for me, this is comfortable situation for my mind, for my subconscious. Mm -hmm. And because this is comfortable situation for my muscle memory. And because of this, it's very difficult to fix my problem. I always repeat it right. because I do it. I did it every time. But if we're trying to broke uh, to broke this situation, uh, a lot of time here in Kegel Chain Center, I just this put the ball on the rack and come with me. And then we start practicing timing, not on the lanes, on the carpet. It's like we just change the environment. And change. We change environment. Yes, right. we change. And uh, a lot of time, I ask my students on this moment. So guys, uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, now, please forget now about boring. Let's dance a little bit. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, some rhythm, some music. One, two, two, two. two. So uh, it's look like I use different words. Not what I use uh, on this moment. Use the words when we practice. Usually, yes. Mm -hmm. We on carpet. We we have different environment. We have no bowling balls in our, in our mass. And because of this, because of this, we can create new muscle memory much more easier. Old muscle memory, I think it's something different. Right, because there's no approach and there's no bowling ball. Yes. You've changed yes. the circumstances to where now the brain thinks yes. you're reprogramming or and it's a new image I need to create because I yeah. don't have an image. And it's much more it's easier for reprogramming this stuff. So just change the environment. Yeah, sometimes it's just as simple as taking the bowling ball out of their hand on the approach. You can even do it sometimes that way. Sometimes you have to break them completely out. It yes. just depends yeah. on the individual. Yeah. Yes, it depends on the individual. individual. But this is, uh, for my opinion, this is the faster way. Just teach environment how to fix mm -hmm. the product. Okay. So that is the gist of the information that we wanted to cover here.
Um, real quickly, just so you know, our next webinar will be on April 9th. Um, I'm not sure. It's down, I narrowed it down to two different um, guest speakers that will be with me, but I'm not 100% sure who it'll be yet, so I don't know on that. We'll send out a mailer probably about two weeks ahead of time. Uh, that'll give you the final information for that, but I would encourage you to always tune in. Here's my contact information and Alex's, um, so you can feel free to reach out to either of us. We'll answer whatever questions are in the chat right now, um, but feel free to reach out to us, uh, either of those contact information. So um, let's see how far back here I need to go. La, 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 la. Um, let's see. Hello, Leslie. I don't think I said hello to you either. Hello, Danny. Uh, mirror is a great idea. I like that one a lot. Uh, we agree. We use it here in the training center quite a bit. People have asked us a lot about uh, whether we're going to sell that product. The problem is it's made from, I mean, we could create a bridge and we could create the screen part of it, but we don't make projectors. We're not going to start making projectors. Um, partially because they're expensive and there's not a lot of room to mark them up. So as of right now, we're not making anything. Uh, if you have specific questions about how to make one and that's something you're interested in doing, um, then feel free to reach out to one of us and we can kind of give you some ideas of the things that he's learned. Uh, he specifically uses certain um, a certain type of communication with the camera that has yeah. very low latency. Uh, it's very similar. I think it's the same that they use in drones. Is that right? Drone camera, uh, no. so the latency. No, no. Yeah, it's close. It's close, but uh, not exactly so the same. Not as, not as, not as so it's got lower latency, so that the, the there's less of a gap in between. The how. cheapest way. The cheapest way. Just use the the cord. The cord. Yes, this is the cheapest way. But if you use the cord, it's a lot of stuff right. on this on the floor. Yeah, it's not a good one. Uh, Seth used the training center, or not used the training center. He used the mirror when he was training in martial arts. That's true. Um, what height changes can be made with the arrow? In other words, what is the dimensions of the arrow, different heights of the student? I don't know the exact measurements of it. I mean, I can go grab one real fast, I guess, but do you know how tall it gets when you extend it to its highest version? Oh, no. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember exactly the numbers, yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, can it? I know it gets far enough up that it could, I've never had it not reach somebody's waist, so it definitely gets high enough up for that. Yeah. And I mean, we've got people as tall as Dell here, that's six, seven, I think. So we have, we never have problems. Yeah, I've never had students, a problem yes. reaching anybody's shoulder or yeah. waist for that matter. Yeah. So yeah. I know it extends pretty good. I don't know the exact measurements. I can get that to you if you want to send me a note. But, I think um, I think it's uh, uh, so, so, sorry. Uh, I think it's pretty close to uh, five feet. Five feet, five feet. I, think it's, I think I want to say it's like no, 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 we, five inches, we, we, and then, then one more. Yeah, it's as much as much. Yeah, yeah, so the one it. bottom piece extends out to basically well, double. Two five feet plus three feet two. Yes, it's like uh, yeah, so it, it 10, would, 10, 10, 11 feet. It would easily get there. So I'm sorry. I okay. Um, yeah. It's okay, I was reading this one. So I have answered that one there for you. This other one was in private, so I was just making sure it was something I was supposed to read. So it's Cheryl, she asked us, um, she's talking about her high school daughter. She has an average of 203 on a house pattern. She also has scoliosis and 19 screws in her back and a small fusion. How do we teach and train her about sport patterns as her body just does not do some things? Um, it's an interesting question. Because whether you're on sport patterns or house patterns, um, the limitations of her back probably shouldn't cause major issues. I don't see them needing to. So, so, uh, so for the me, first thing for I would me, do is for me, for me, there are no differences between uh, sport oil pattern and mm -hmm. house oil pattern. Why? Because if we're talking about targeting system, we're talking about targeting line. Yes, we just set up targeting line on different mm -hmm. position with different exit point or break point right. on the lane. Yes, and then only one thing. How accurate I am, I am as a player, yes. So for me, uh, on how short condition, on how short condition, I just have much, much more margin of error. Mm -hmm. But uh, if we, we must, point one yes, and point, two. point one and point two, yes. So I don't, uh, I don't think uh, it's a huge difference. Yes, uh, how short condition, uh, recreation condition, yes. Just create some of. A uh, bad habit, yes. Right. I know if I have refs and just throw the ball to the right, I'm yeah. good, yes. Yeah. So that's why Every on this moment, that's my that's why on this moment, players just start just forget about 
direction and targeting line. But if you learn your students, if you learn your daughter how to reach the targeting line and how to adjust this targeting line on the surface of the lane, that's it. Now, house, short condition and spot the condition, this is the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the best example, the best things I have to tell you, Cheryl, is I would a get her bowling on those patterns as much as possible because the uh, the best way to learn how to bowl better on those patterns is to get experience on them. Um, they become a lot less scary and you start to become less sloppy uh, because you're bowling on them. Um, the second thing that I would say is if she's having trouble and she gets scared uh, when she goes from one pattern to the other is it could just have to do with well, how she's looking at the lane. Um, and like he said, all bowling is a target A and a target B, and it's just a matter of choosing which ones to match up to different patterns because I'm either A, trying to create a certain shape of a bowling ball, or I'm trying to play a certain part of the lane. Um, so I would get her first bowling on the different patterns, and then second, learning what she has to do to change that target A and that target B. The biggest problem that I see a lot of people will do is they try to have the same approach for everything and create different target A's and target B's, yeah. but with the exact same approach. So then their problem becomes that their body doesn't want to do something, so all their brain your knows approach, is... Your approach must fall to your targeting client. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, so then they'll start trying to do the same thing, so now all the brain knows how to do is, okay, I've got to get the ball to go further right, so instead of me making, uh, letting it happen by adjusting my body and standing in a different spot, I will try to force it to happen. So now I start doing weird things my, with my arm swing, and my, my arm swing will now start going different directions and things like that. So I would encourage her to learn to practice those things. If you want to send a video real quickly, I could probably give you some better feedback, um, but we'd be happy to answer those. A lot of good information online. I think we have a couple of our tips that kind of talk about how to match up patterns. Um, if you're not sure what PL minus 31 is, that might be a good thing to introduce to her. Uh, that I think would also help her understand a little bit better. So, Steve, thank you for the nice job. Uh, Danny, thank you. Alex, you did a great job. Um, great job. Can we get a copy of today of notes? Uh, Marion, we will have the presentation reposted up on YouTube, so you can go back and review it at any time through there. Um, so feel free to look for that in that location. Uh, if you still had more information or you need something more written, because um, you would prefer to read it as opposed to listen to it. Um, maybe you're a little bit, uh, you don't want to hear it, you want to see it, so maybe you're a little more visual. Um, feel free to send either one of us a note, and I'm sure he's got some notes here. Yeah. I don't know that you're going to read his Russian very good, but... No, 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 I, have, I have, I have. Oh, you have I English have, 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 Oh, he has the translated version, too, yes. so if you needed the <laughs> English version. But if you want the Russian version, whichever version you want, uh, is it Marion or Marlon? I'm not sure. Either way, you contact us and we'll be happy to get that there. Yep. So, um, Danny, I'm not sure what you're asking for. You can get it next time you're at the training center. But yes, you can. You're here all the time. Um, did you have an example of the back posture, posture item you spoke of? Um, the item I was talking about wasn't a bowling tool. It's a... Uh, a back posture device that's uh, becoming really popular in the last couple of years, and I don't remember. Do you remember what the name of it is? Uh, I, don't I think there's about. several of them, but a lot of them just attach to like the upper crest of your uh, back or your shirt, and then when it recognizes you're not at a certain angle, then it gives you feedback. But it's not a bowling specific thing. If you uh, Google uh, uh, posture uh, trainer, I think you'll find it that way. Some you'll get a lot of those uh, devices that are like back supports almost kind of stuff, but there's also some that if you look, you'll uh, eventually see it, so. Um, I'd like to copy the notes too, and I'm going to use a few or most of the ideas. Jim, uh, feel free to send us an email, and um, yeah. we'll give you whichever version, like we said, Russian or English, you let us know which one you want, okay. and we'll get those notes to you. Uh, what is the easiest way to convert left brain thinking to the right brain? That's what, Ken what, Kasper's act. What? What's the easiest way to convert left brain thinking to right brain? Ken, you need to just have a conversation when you're here. With, no, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, for my way, for my opinion, the, the easiest way, the easiest way, just don't use left brain. Just don't use. The just don't use, don't use left it. brain. Look, you can use left side of the brain. Have you met Ken? <laughs> That is not going so, to look, for Ken. A lot of artists, a lot of artists, they just draw, yes? Yeah. 
and they don't think on this moment yes they just use the right side of the brain so and uh, that's why that's why look we must use left side of the brain for create correct image for right side mm -hmm. don't try to explain something for right side using numbers one more time if you're trying to think about your tilt forward like my tilt forward must be six degree more that's it you don't use only left side of the brain no, but yeah. if right side has no chance because yes. it doesn't look at numbers yes but if somebody i mean maybe coach maybe coach just a little bit tilt you more forward you feel kinesthetic you feel now you have your brain kinesthetic. Will know what that's yes exactly. and your right side of the brain exactly know what that means yes and then because of this they feel it before yes they can repeat this feeling so it's look like kinesthetic feedback audio feedback help us one more time we must use left side of the brain just for creating images for right side and then the right side start to form this one yeah so some of the uh, things that i would say ken is to one look at um uh changing the environment like the example he gave earlier we've even done practice sessions in the training center where we turn out most of the lights so there's just enough lights to kind of see enough to pick up a bowling ball and not hurt yourself but by changing the whole environment and making it feel like something different than it is, then the right side of the brain decides, well, wait a minute, I don't know how to do it this way. So any little things like that, uh, practicing in front of a mirror, not even at the bowling center, being on the carpet, any of those types of things where it engages the right brain to think, okay, I don't understand what this is because it's different than what I'm at normally doing. Any of those types of things will get that there. But the other ways is using those feedback methods that uh, aren't looking at the, which, you're a very logical person where it's a step one, step two, step three, those types of thoughts aren't going to be the types of thoughts that translate from left to right very good. So you gotta figure out the images and the other feedbacks that help with that, so. Uh, Cheryl, the brain is causing your hand to come over the top of the ball. Um, you were right on top of it. So, yeah, so I think that was in relation to that other question that you'd ask. Uh, before but like I said if she's having trouble and she's not visualizing that feel free to contact us and um, One of us could probably give you some ideas uh, after a little bit better understanding of exactly Absolutely sure problems. after a few practice uh, with, 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 with video mirror we can fix this problem like this right. Yes, yeah, but even I, a lot of times if you can even just practice on the torch itself yeah. For people that don't visualize the lane very well because the hardest part for a lot of times for when people are making that transition from uh, from house bowling to sport bowling is that on house bowling, there's basically one zone that you have to kind of stay in most of the time. On sport bowling, the zones are more extreme and more defined. So in a house bowling, there's a lot of ways you can get to the same point usually and still make it work. And a lot of times there's even several different uh, strategies that you can use that will give you a decent enough margin of error to be successful. When you get to the sport version of it, they usually become less, uh, less options. Like you've really got to do more of what the lane yeah. wants because it yes. forces you to have to do more of this. Yeah. So it kind of will become um, hard for people to visualize that because if they're used to, just to give you round numbers, if they're down and in player and they're used to always going 10, 11, 12-ish to seven, yeah. eight, nine down yeah. lane, yeah. Yeah. It's like as soon have... as I tell you to go three to three down the lane and go straight up the gutter, that feels like total mystery to you because you've never been in that part of lane. So just even having the torch on there, the nice part about the torch is it helps you visualize the 3d-ness of the lane better because it now helps your body to understand and also the nice part about it is it helps your body understand because generally speaking we want to be uh, uh, perpendicular to our target area so now it helps us understand exactly what direction we're trying to throw the ball so i would really try to get her near a torch somehow and practice on that but like i said feel free to give us a call and we'll be help happy to help you um Oh, thank you, Danny, I, for me doing a good job also. No, he's the brains behind the operation. I'm just here to run the clicker. Um, thank you, Stephen, for the thank you. Thank you, Ken. Um, and tell Miss Sandra I said hello if she's not there. Um, and we will see you guys hopefully in the next couple weeks. Uh, we'll give you a second. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you again for everybody that came. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Alex, for the good information. Thank you, Brent. Thank, thank you, Brent. So, uh, on this on this conversation, it was my right side of the brain. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, you guys have any questions? My cell phone number is up there. Feel free to call me or email me. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. And again, thank you guys for coming. I guess we will. Yeah. Call it. Anything else you want to say in closing? Thank you very much.
current media, so I and uh, more power so to the right brain. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Everybody, leave your left brains at home. Bring yeah. your right brains to <laughs> Thanks, guys, for coming. We'll talk to you in a couple weeks. The next one.